I was really wondering when I got up this morning about 7 o'clock Eastern time, what was I going to talk about today? <laughs> and then at 10.15 Eastern time, the Wall Street Journal published a new story written by Joe Palazzolo, Ted Mann, and Joe Flint uncovering new information uh, previ about previously unreported settlements by World Wrestling Entertainment owner and CEO Vince McMahon to at least four women who have alleged sexual misconduct against the company's chairman. And here we go with this. The total amount paid out over the last 16 years has totaled over $12 million dollars and are part of non-disclosure agreements that the four women signed and prevent them from discussing uh, or pursuing legal claims against the now 76-year-old McMahon. The journal notes that it has reviewed documents as well as spoken to people who are familiar with the matter. The biggest bombshells coming out of today's reporting include the report of a seven and a half million dollar settlement with a former wrestler who alleges that McMahon, quote, coerced her into giving him oral sex and then demoted her and ultimately declined to not to renew to not renew. <laughs> I'm sorry. Pardon me. Ultimately declined to renew her contract in 2005 after she resisted further sexual encounters. The story notes that the wrestler and her attorney approached McMahon in 2018 and negotiated the payment in return for her silence. Also, according to the journal, in 2008, their, quote, a WWE contractor presented the company with unsolicited nude photos of Mr. McMahon. She reported receiving from him and alleged that he had sexually harassed her on the job. According to people familiar with the women's 2008 non-disclosure agreement, Mr. McMahon agreed to pay her roughly one million. These people said, end quote. The story followed by stating, per a 2006 agreement, quote, a former manager who had worked 10 years for Mr. McMahon before he allegedly initiated a sexual relationship with her was paid $1 million to keep quiet about it, according to people familiar with the deal, end quote. Also in 2006, as some of you may remember, an employee at a Boca Raton, Florida tanning salon accused McMahon of groping her, trying to kiss her, and showing her nude photos of himself on his phone. McMahon said, quote, he was only trying to have a little fun, according to the woman's account in the police report. McMahon's lawyer, Jerry McDivitt, told police McMahon denied any wrongdoing and prosecutors declined to file charges, citing a lack of independent evidence. On June 17th of this year, Stephanie McMahon took over as the acting chairwoman of the board and company CEO as Vince stepped aside. Two days prior, the journal broke the story of the WWE's board of directors investigating a secret $3 million settlement McMahon had reached with a former paralegal with whom he is alleged to have an affair with. And there's new reporting there, too, with the journal story stating that people familiar with the matter claim the person in question was hired as a legal assistant in 2019, despite the fact she never applied for the job. The story has a quote saying Mr. McMahon had met her at his Stamford, Connecticut condo building where both were living. The story went on to claim that WWE placed her in the legal department because the woman's resume said that she had attended law school and that the woman often talked with colleagues in the department about her close relationship with Mr. McMahon. And the talk was so frequent that her boss asked her to stop, saying she was making other employees uncomfortable, according to one of those people. That same paralegal, as everyone will remember, was later reportedly shifted over to Talent Relations in 2021 to become the personal assistant of John Laurinaitis, with whom she is also alleged to have an affair. And as everyone remembers, probably from the initial story, 
Uh, there was a quote of her being passed around like a toy, and that came from an email, an anonymous email, that was sent to the board of directors, which ended up opening up this investigation. In 2021, the woman transferred from the legal department to talent relations under Mr. Laurinaitis, who returned to the role he had held a decade earlier. And we have more information on that, because according to the story, WWE considered raising the woman's annual salary from $100,000 to around $300,000 at McMahon's request, according to people familiar with the matter. The company settled on a base salary of $200,000 and a director level position. Now, McMahon's lawyer, Jerry McDivitt, in a response sent to the Wall Street Journal on June 8th, made clear that the woman in question did not make any claims of harassment against McMahon and that WWE did not pay any monies to her directly as it relates to her relationship with McMahon, that this settlement was completely paid by Vince. Now, as previously reported, the WWE board is not only looking into that Laurinaitis relationship, but also a $1.5 million NDA that was reached in 2012 with another female employee who also claimed misconduct against the former Johnny Ace and... I'm just going to note here that on July 30th, 2012, Laurinaitis resigned after nearly a decade at the head of the food chain. Uh, when it comes to talent relations, he cited burnout and a desire to go back to producing matches, which he did. On March 10th, 2021, Dave Meltzer had broke the story of Laurinaitis' return back to the top of the food chain after WWE had reorganized the talent relations division. On April 22nd, 2021, Mark Carano was fired as the senior director of talent relations after Mickey James came forward on Twitter with the uh, revelation that talent gets uh, released by the company. And then they have the indignity of having their personal belongings all get shoved into trash bags that are then shoved into a cardboard box and sent back to them. And when he was fired, many WWE uh, former WWE personnel came out and just hammered this guy, including Mike Chioda, Teddy Long, Fred Rosser, three other ones that did, Gail Kim, Jillian Hall, Maria Kanellis, all of whom noted that their belongings were sent back to them into in trash bags. And Gail Kim added that she thought Carano wasn't a very good human being. After he was fired, even Carano's girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, jumped in, alleging that he had stolen WWE title belts, hid them in, under a bed in his guest bedroom, as well as other claims such as him wanting to kill an ex-girlfriend's cat. After Carano was fired, Canellis tweeted, This is not the fault of that one individual. It is a company-wide cultural problem. It comes from the top. The original Wall Street Journal story on June 15th noted that the firm that's investigating the allegations is also assessing WWE's compliance and human relations programs and company culture. Funny enough, earlier today, a WWE source indicated to Sean Ross Sapp and Fightful Select that when McMahon came back to Gorilla following his appearance on the June 17th SmackDown, the same day he stepped aside as chairman and CEO, he shouted, F him. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so you heard how I ended that last segment. This is what Sean Ross Sapp is reporting, that Vince, uh, when he stomped back into the gorilla position after SmackDown on June 17th, where he strutted himself out there, he went to the back and said F him, except he obviously said the whole thing. If that gives you any idea on what he thought about the Wall Street Journal story and the board's investigation of him. Speaking of the board, and I don't believe that we mentioned this this week, 
On Wednesday, Connor Shell, who was elected to the WWE board last year, submitted his resignation effective immediately. The company stated that in the securities filing that got reported on Thursday. The reason that was given was that Shell resigned due to increased responsibilities that he's taken on at the North Road Company, a newly formed content studio. Quote, Mr. Shell's decision to resign from the board was not due to any dispute or disagreement with the company, its management, or the board on any matter relating to the company's operations, policies, or practices, the filing said. Shell had been added to the WWE's board of directors on June 1st of last year, alongside such names as Steve Conan and Nick Khan. And it served as ESPN's vice president of content, including being responsible for the development and production of all live event studio and original content across ESPN's platforms, with one of his more notable achievements being the creation of the acclaimed 30 for 30 documentary series. So Mr. Shell suddenly realized he had so much work that he had to do with this new North Road content company that was uh, that he has created or that he is working for that he just had to quit right this second. So take that for what you will. It may be nothing. It may be something. I have no idea. But it's interesting that somebody, usually when somebody steps down from a board... Unless there is some sort of family issue or something like that, there is usually a large grace period where they just very much step back and their duties are taken on by other people. And that would be it. He's leaving immediately. So um, I wonder what the day is like mentally for Vince McMahon today as he gets ready for SmackDown tonight. It's just, this is amazing. And it's. <laughs> To go back to, and I was going to move on from all this. I went a whole segment, really, with only talking about it at the, the very beginning of the last segment. But John Laurinaitis being put back into a head position. Now, I know technically Stephanie, and at one point Triple H, and, I, and I, I'd have to go back and, and go to the corporate website and see the exact titles for everyone but like stephanie and triple h have at times been on the the flow chart higher than john laurinaitis but he's always been that go-to guy and mark carano was then kind of that guy he became the hatchet man seemingly and this stuff happens with laurinaitis in 2012 he is much like, you know, like when, and uh, you know, if I recall my history correctly, like when they were ready to get Khrushchev out in, in the Soviet Union, he was he was tired and he needs a rest. And I definitely remember when it was getting Gorbachev out of there that, you know, well, he's tired. He needs a rest. And those coups, and one coup in one place and the other case, I guess it was Brezhnev. I can't even remember who took over uh, for Khrushchev, but... It, the fact remains that they were very tired. And John Laurinaitis got very tired of what he was doing, and he was placed into a producer's role in 2012 after somebody there, Vince McMahon for sure, being one of them, knew that an NDA for $1.5 million was signed. He's brought back after Mark Carano, who's... Again, there were a lot of things said after the fact about Mark Carano or things that were alleged or indicated by former wrestlers about him not being that great of a guy and maybe having some issues with female talent. We hear we heard how some of the female talent described him and after he's gone a month before that, John Laurinaitis, with all the shifting that went on, he was placed back at the top of the food chain.
there may be a problem with the corporate culture there. And we'll just have to see how things play out, I guess. But Stephanie McMahon looking more and more like she could very easily stay in that position at the top. But how much... She knew about a lot of the things that took place as a member of the board of directors and as a member of the family is going to be into question. Same thing when it comes to Paul Levesque. Same thing when it comes to Kevin Dunn, who's on the board. All these people that have been there a long time. What did you know? When did you know it? Because if we're investigating corporate culture, we're investigating all of these other things that go along with this, the human resources part, all of that stuff, while... All of that's going on. It's easy to say, okay, with Stephanie in, that should kind of soothe the matters here. But they're going to be looking back and like all of this stuff was taking place. And technically, if your name was at the top of the flow chart, that was, shouldn't it kind of sort of also be on you? Can they pass that buck? I don't know. Really interesting, though, obviously. Also... I made a joke earlier on on Twitter today about people drawing lines using that Brian Windhorst thing when he was on ESPN talking about Utah and the trades that were made in the NBA. And they're clearing my way. And what for? And made a joke about people, you know, to all the, the Twitter conspiracy theorists trying to draw lines and trying to figure out who the women are. And I felt bad about making that joke, even though I just meant it as a, a play on the meme, because there's probably people that are, have gone out there and tried to do that, to which I would say you're a pretty crappy human being to do that, because unless you are a, an accredited member of a media source, and even then, if you are, don't. Don't. It's not your business. Most of these women are tied by these agreements. They can't talk. And for them to forego those agreements and get into a legal battle with WWE in the hopes of trying to land a book deal or something like that, no. Nah. So don't do that. Because uh, apparently one jackass did the last time around and was thoroughly... Uh, beaten down for it, and uh, probably, at least online, physically, probably those people should be beaten down as well, too, because, again, it's sticking your nose where it doesn't belong, and it's doxing somebody who doesn't deserve it. So hopefully everybody, as this story goes on, and if more things come out, hopefully uh, there's a level of decorum that continues to take place, and uh, maybe some of these things... Uh, should be left to the professionals because it seems like right now the Wall Street Journal is pretty uh, doing a, a really, a really good job of all of it. So, this is how the show begins. Really, Oscar does a back kick, camera cut. She does a back fist, camera cut. She starts to run, camera cut. She hits a hip attack, camera cut. She drops to her knees, camera cut. She throws a kick, camera cut. She stands up and screams, camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious. Do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.